Celestron advertised their 12 by 60 binoculars as being suitable for both terrestrial and astronomical observations. But what exactly can you see? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite things to observe with them, along with give you some tips and suggestions along the way if you do proceed to get them, or perhaps even if you've just got them. Now, before I begin, I do just want to quickly mention that if you have any questions, comments or feedback on this video or these binoculars or any other astronomy equipment then be sure to drop them down below and I'll get back to you and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and hit the like button if you like this video and want me to continue with this series of videos. So with all that said what are my favorite things to observe? At number one it has to be the moon. Now with these binoculars I like to start at the terminator where the lunar shadows are longest now this is the line that reveals mountains and valleys and I do feel that you can get a good view with the 12 by 60s. So 12 by 60, um, the 60 millimeter being the objective lens uh, and the 12, 12 times being the magnification, I feel that's a really, really good balance there. Um, and I'll get onto that uh, in, in, uh, in due course. Number two, what I like to observe, are Jupiter and its moons. So with these binoculars, um, you will see a disc, uh, not just a point of light, which is really interesting. Now, the real showstopper for these binoculars is uh, tracking the four largest moons, so Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, as they dance around the planet. Now, you do need to bear in mind the specification of these binoculars. You aren't going to see the finest detail as you would with larger telescopes uh, and more expensive telescopes, but you, do, you can start to see these moons with the binoculars, which is absolutely great. I love to watch them. Next is Saturn. Very, very intriguing through these binoculars. Or you can't see the rings distinctly, um, you can see an elongated appearance through the binoculars. So Saturn is something you can hope to see with the right conditions um, with these binoculars. At four, Venus and Mars. So you can get some unique sights of both of these planets. Uh, Venus does show its phases, sometimes appearing as a thin crescent. Mars, alternatively, will stand out with its red and orange hue. So you can start to see those with these binoculars. Uranus, the distant planet, can also be spotted, especially under uh, ideal sky conditions. But you have to consider, due to its distance, you're not going to make out much, if any, detail at all. Then we have double stars. I like to start with Mesa and Alcor in the Big Dipper. They're an easy uh, double star to separate, which is great. And then you can try Theta Tora in Taurus for a more challenging observation. It is a challenge. You're not going to see that very often. Just bear that in mind. Then we have open star clusters. So the Pleiades M45 in Taurus is an absolute must see, I would say. Um, this open star cluster with its six to seven stars is best appreciated in binoculars due to its wide expanse. And these are the binoculars that will enable you to do so. The Beehive Cluster M44 in Cancer is another favourite, revealing more stars uh, through binoculars than you would obviously get with your naked eye, so something to, to look out for. Then there's Globular Clusters, so for a slightly different view, try the Great Cluster in Hercules, M13. Uh, it's a massive cluster of ancient stars which contrast uh, with the younger open clusters, so that is an absolute favourite of mine as well. And then there's Nebula, particularly the, the Orion Nebula, or M42. So this nebula is a glowing patch on Orion's sword and it's just enhanced beautifully through these binoculars. So it's something I would suggest that you attempt to observe. So some tips and advice for these binoculars or using binoculars for astronomy in general. The first is I'd recommend always starting with the moon. Uh, that will help you get your bearings. Uh, it's always easy to find and it's just always a joy to observe. It always looks different. Um, due to its different phases and just where it presents itself in the sky, the, the light conditions, etc. So I would start with the moon. It's always great fun. Next, I would recommend using a tripod. Well, as you can see, I've been holding these binoculars throughout this video. They're not too heavy. However, if you are holding them overhead, especially for extended periods, tripods just really, really help with that. It's not just your arm strength you need to consider, it's your neck strength, and that's where I feel that my, my neck starts to give way, and I just, I just, it's just not as fun when, until you have a tripod. Now. These are really, really easy to attach to a tripod. This little mechanism here, I'm kind of pointing with my finger, 
with the kind of orange there. That unscrews and you, you do need to get to buy a separate uh, tripod adapter uh, for these binoculars. We'll leave a link in the description below uh, for the one I use and you also need a, a tripod as well but they basically just screw in to the adapter and the adapter screws onto the top of a tripod so it's really, really easy to set up and you know tripods aren't that expensive and it, I, I must admit it really uh, it's really enhanced my observations and you know you can use tripods for uh, other binoculars if you do decide to upgrade further down the line. I would also recommend experimenting with the eye cut positions so that will enable you to have the most comfortable viewing um, especially if you wear glasses or perhaps even contact lenses. So if you wear glasses, you're going to need these eye cup uh, lenses uh, out. Um, I've, I've got glasses, I wear glasses, so that's why they're out at the moment. But if you don't wear glasses, you can actually retract these back and it'll be, it's just much more comfortable. And yeah, I'd recommend doing that. You get better, better views as well. So there's a couple of other things which I haven't mentioned, and that's what you can use these for in terms of terrestrial viewing. Now, it's worth mentioning because, as I said at the start of this video, they are designed for terrestrial observations as well. So, number 10 is birds and wildlife. So if you did want to use these in the day, uh, they are exceptional for bird watching. So if you have a look over here, I've got a bird box, and I've started to basically watch the birds with these binoculars, even though I got them for astronomy purposes. So the 12 times magnification brings distant animals into sharp focus. So they're great you know, if you go for a walk uh, as well. And they're not, as I said, they're not too heavy, so you could carry them in a bag, and they're not too big either. So that's one of the benefits of them. Um, you can see the fine details of birds, as I've kind of perhaps touched upon. And because they have a wide field of view, they also cover a large area, which is absolutely brilliant. So it just makes it easier to spot and observe animals in their natural habitat as well. In terms of, in terms of my kind of final recommendation, it's, at number 11 is aviation spotting. So they're actually really, really good for just viewing aircraft or planes in the sky, um, whether they're taking off, landing, or cruising at high altitudes. Uh, it's a different kind of sky watching that I'm particularly used to, but it is something that I've, I've picked up in recent weeks. Uh, and I'd recommend, if you're into that kind of thing, that these binoculars are great for that. Again, you might want a tripod. Now, my final tip with these binoculars is you may be considering other binocular sizes so as an example you may be considering the 15 by 70s the 25 by 70s 20 by 80s etc I've got other videos on my channel about them or what you can see and just uh, reviews of them but uh, if you're not sure what to get you do need to consider what I would suggest is the size the weight um, and what you want to use them for so these are really really good as a combination binocular um, so terrestrial and astro astronomical but if you're purely looking for astronomy uh, observations then I would suggest perhaps a 20 by 80 much much larger much heavier you will need a tripod but they will give you the best views so th that is my video I hope this video was useful uh, if it was please hit the like button as I say any questions comments feedback drop them down below um, these are really really good binoculars I'm really pleased I got them fantastic at the price point and if you haven't got a pair already then I would consider them what I really like about them is the wide field of view. So it's great, they're great for galaxies and clusters. And while the planets are certainly observable, they will, these binoculars won't provide you with those tightly zoomed features uh, that the stronger telescopes will be able to offer you. So just do bear that in mind. Um, ultimately, I really, really like these binoculars. Fantastic for the price. Um, so yeah, as I say, hope this video is useful and I wish you all the best.